If you want to stay injury free and play tennis all your life, then this video is for you. Firstly, we need to get the correct equipment. Let's start with the shoes. Make sure that your shoes are tennis shoes. This is important because running shoes on a tennis court don't give you as much support, they become more bendy and can cause foot problems. You also get better cushioning and better protection with your tennis shoe. Some players like to wear insoles. Make sure that you have good arch support so that your foot alignment is correct. Again, reducing that injury when you're moving around the court. Next, it's all about choosing the correct racket. You want to get the right weight for you so that you don't get injured with your upper body. Often tennis players get injured in their wrist, the elbow and the shoulder because their racket weight is not correct for their game. Now how do we know what is the correct racket weight? Well, it will depend on your level, how long you've played for and of course your age and how powerful you are. If you're playing against players that are hitting the ball very hard and you're playing at a high level, you're more likely to go for a racket that's a little bit heavier. I would recommend going above 300 grams. For a junior player, someone who's just starting out, you want to go below 280 grams. Maybe a 260 grams uh, racket could be appropriate. You have to try the racket and feel the weight that you're comfortable with. You want to be able to swing the racket around freely. But remember that the lower the weight, the more the racket will vibrate against a fast moving ball. So if someone's hitting the ball very hard at you, if you're using a very light racket, you're likely to really feel the ball on the strings. And it'll be more difficult for you to play against those players. So this is where a heavier racket will help. But for the heavier racket, we need the appropriate technique. So make sure that you're working on your technique continuously to make sure that it's efficient. Not warming up for tennis is a major cause of injury. So here are some basic exercises that you can do to make sure that you're prepared to play. Normal jog. Next, we're gonna do some side steps. And you can take short steps where you go really quick, or you can do wide steps where you try and cover distance. This is great for that lateral movement that you're gonna experience in the point. Next, some crossover steps. Now I'm rotating my upper body against the direction of my foot. This is to recreate hitting those shots when you're on the run and that recovery step that you'll have to do after you've hit your shot, the heel flicks. Now go forwards and back because in tennis we're moving forward and backwards constantly. So make sure you recreate it in your warm ups as well. Now lunges are important for both your ground strokes because you have to get into those positions nice and low to generate power from the ground, but also for your volleys when you're coming in, you're stepping forward, so you need to be strong with your legs. So it's a great idea to warm all those muscles up before you play. Now you can do different types of lunges. The forward lunge, You can do the side lunge. Now what I'm trying to do is to make sure that my kneecap doesn't go over my toes because I don't want to create needless tension on my joints and on my tendons. So when I go forward, I try and go down through my, my quads and through my glutes. I try and keep my knee as aligned as possible with my toe. And similarly, when I go to the side, I do exactly the same thing and I try and squat back. And again, I try and align my knee so it doesn't go over my toe. And lastly, to complete our warm up, we're going to do a few sprints. And you can do a few in a row where you go back and forth and get that change of direction. Now, I see players not doing the warm up because they feel like they're going to look silly on the court. 
and I think you're only gonna look silly when you get injured because you haven't warmed up. So make sure you put that warm up in. It doesn't take long. It's gonna make a big difference to your game. Now let's look at the technique. Make sure that when you're hitting your strokes to avoid injury, you need to stay as smooth as possible. You don't want very quick, jerky actions. You want to be smooth. You want to complete your strokes. So when you take the racket back, you wanna have a good, uh, nice, relaxed take back. Don't squeeze your racket too hard because it's gonna make you muscle that ball. And it's gonna more likely cause injury. So if you are using the correct technique and you're not overdoing it, you're gonna get the racket back nice and early. You wanna go through, make sure you're breathing out so you're keeping your body as relaxed as possible. You wanna get that easy power through that relaxed arm, the letting go of the racket, rather than muscling it. And that's what causes injury. Now make sure that with whatever shot that you hit, you're allowing the racket head to uh, carry its momentum through the stroke. This is a great way of staying relaxed. Now, for example, with the serve, when I take the racket into my trophy position, from here, I drop the hit, and it's a continuous motion. I'm allowing my racket head to continue moving without much effort, and that's gonna give me easy power without muscling. You don't want any stops in your action because the moment you stop, that's when you're gonna have to engage your muscles and you're gonna have to try extra hard, and again, which may cause injury. Now, just like with our technique, our footwork is very important, and here it's important not to have those sudden stops as well. So when I'm hitting my shots, when I go up for the ball, I try and go through contact, and I'm continuously moving into the shot rather than having to stop and have very hard stops, which may cause injuries in my knee, my ankle, or my hip. So being as light as possible and light through contact. So as I'm going forward, I'm pivoting, so I'm onto my toe, pivoting around my footwork. If I'm going for a wide one, I can either use the top step, I can use the side step, I can use the crossover step. All these footworks and even a running step in order to prevent that sudden stop that may jar or cause an injury in my joints. So staying as light as possible, try and get to the ball before the ball bounces. So you're anticipating where the ball's gonna go, you're getting into position so that you don't have to be as rushed and you don't have those sudden movements. The more smooth, the more fluid you are with your movement, the better it is for your joints and for your body. And this brings us to our last point. Make sure that you're warming down. Make sure you're stretching after your sessions. If you've had a, a big match, a long workout, you want to stretch. You want to make sure that you elongate those muscles so that the next time you're not feeling stiff the next day and you're more likely to, uh, to play properly and not injure yourself. Now you can go through different uh, stretching routines but make sure that you're stretching all the major muscles. So they're your calves, your hamstrings, your quads and you can work your way up all the way to your shoulder, your, uh, your elbow, you know you can stretch your tricep, uh, you can then also do some wrist stretches. So make sure that you're stretching all the major body parts that you're going to be using when playing. This will help to prevent those injuries and make your body last longer. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this video is gonna make your body last longer in tennis. Make sure that you press the subscribe button, the notification bell so you don't miss out on our further lessons. Make sure you leave a comment under the video and tell me what you've enjoyed most and what you struggle with in your game. I hope to see you on court very soon.